And one of the questions is how do you move from these physical dollars to electronic dollars? Uh, I think the basic technology is going to take place on the internet. I think the specific platform in the emerging world um, is going to be on a cell phone platform. If you look at the numbers, there are about 360 million, um, about 150 million online desktop-based accounts today. That number is projected to grow to about 300, 350 million in the next five years. However, with respect to cell phones, internet-enabled cell phones, they're just getting rolled out right now. They already have some significant penetration in Japan, in uh, Finland, in Sweden. They're getting rolled out in Western Europe, the U.S. next year. Uh, the numbers are projected to grow from about 10 million internet-enabled cell phones today to about 1 billion in five years. In five years from now, everybody who is a member of the middle class in the emerging world and in the developed world will have an internet-enabled cell phone. And this sort of a cell in, in China, the number is projected to be going, go to something like 300 million cell phones, most of which will be internet-enabled. These people will have access to um, their bank accounts, and it will be very easy for them to move money into an account in a safe jurisdiction where, um, where the banks are not politically controlled, um, and they will basically be able to completely dollarize the economy. There will be no need to have any rubles or renminbi, and it will be non-traceable. No matter how illegal the Chinese Communist government says it is to hold U.S. dollars, you will have a password on your cell phone, and the only way to stop this process would be literally to shut down the telecommunications network. And that's the kind of choice governments like China, India, some of these other countries are going to face. They will either have to shut down the telecommunications network and make it illegal for you to own a cell phone, or they will have to basically uh, give up the kind of monetary sovereignty they've had and the enormous power that uh, they've been able to wield as a result of this kind of sovereignty over the last uh, many, many years. Um, and I think, so I think this process is already full-fledged. The, the dollarization worldwide is going to be accelerated enormously by the technology. Now, the, the second theme is a little bit more speculative, um, and that is that, of that getting rid of money altogether, going from um, digital dollars, from any kind of government-backed currency, to purely private currencies. And what, what a private currency, or what private money, I think, fundamentally means is that there is no medium of exchange. You exchange value for value rather than exchanging value for something the government says has value for value. And whenever you have this intermediate step of the government saying something has value, that's where you have the subterfuge, the sort of legere domain come in, the game of musical chairs where every now and then a chair gets pulled out and it turns out that you're the one holding a dollar bill that's all of a sudden become worth a little bit less. Um, and the kind of exchange of value for value, you know, the, the classic model would have been some sort of a barter model. That obviously has enormous transaction costs associated with it. These transaction costs go down in a digital age. And the kind of model that I think is the most likely to take place is one where you have other kinds of financial instruments that are very, very liquid. The one I would cite in the U.S. would be something like um, an index on the S&P 500. Uh, or some sort of generalized stock market index, where instead of having currency as being the um, place where you have value, it is in real property, real companies, things that actually have real value. And so that you might conduct business by trading, not dollars, but trading little slivers of the S&P 500, or of particularly large stocks like Microsoft or something like that. My guess is that it might be the whole stock market as a whole, and that as you make as you trade these things, that's where you have the kind, that, that becomes, in effect, a de facto currency. Now, this is still pretty far-fetched, but it is not quite as far-fetched as you might think. And, and just as we've had people in Russia replace rubles with dollars, we have had people in the U.S. replace dollars with equity. And uh, over the last 20 years, um, one of the very big sort of financial debates that takes place is whether the U.S. equity market is wildly overvalued or whether it's at a fair value or undervalued or anything like that. And one of the things people often talk about in making judgments about whether the equity market is overvalued is something called the risk premium on stocks. What is the expected return on equity over government bonds? And for much of the 20th century, the risk premium has been enormous. It's been something like 7-8% in the 1930s, 1940s, and even a decade ago it was still 4-5%. You, you were expected to earn 
four or five percent more on equity than on bonds, and that's why they were, they were priced. Today, the risk premium on equity has gone down to about two percent, and so people are saying they're not much more risky than government bonds. Now, if we really carry this digital argument to its conclusion, there will come a day at which the risk premium might be zero. If you actually look at the volatility in price, it's about the same. There's a strong theoretical reason for suggesting the risk premium should be zero, and maybe it should even be negative. Maybe at the end of the day, companies like Microsoft and McDonald's and Intel and um, the whole conglomeration, conglomeration of companies has more intrinsic value than any given government, even the U.S. government. So that, uh, so if, if you believe that that sort of trend is going to take place, we are already starting to see this kind of displacement. And uh, again, it's it's always a question of whether you want to impute this particular explanation to it. But I think it is one interpretation of what's been happening with the equity markets is this base that they have based that they're basically starting to function as currency. And of course, this is the way people talk about stocks all the time: is that it's it's driven by liquidity, it's driven by people putting money into stocks, all of these things, because that's where people perceive the true value to really reside. Um, there are some you know, questions in terms of what can go wrong with a scenario. Um, and sort of I, I, you know, I agree with Richard on an awful lot of things. One place where I will disagree um, is, is not a big fundamental disagreement, but it's a disagreement on emphasis, is I don't think the big fights on this are going to be fought in Washington, D.C. I think that, uh, for, and actually it's for all the reasons Richard cited. The people in D.C. are completely backwards. They don't understand any of the technology. And even to the extent they can, it can't be stopped. It, you cannot stop things on the level of Washington, D.C. in terms of shutting down um, these encryption protocols, things like that. 